Get ready and strap in for the One Love HTX show, where all our conversations are always raw, unfiltered, and never staged. We can also be found on Instagram, all major streaming platforms, and westcliff.org. Check us out at onelovehtx.org for more info or ways to support the show. Now get ready to dive into conversations you won't always have in church with your hosts, Joshua Duffy and Daniel Salsi. Boom. Boom. <laughs> there goes the boom. Yeah, there there goes the boom. Okay, we're well, live. <laughs> Back season two with Joshua Duffy, Daniel Saucy, One Love HTX, West Cliff, Whosoever's HTX, the whole bit. We're just all in here. So before we get started and introduce those uh, that person that you've all been waiting for, because I've been getting lots of messages and texts about it, uh, just a couple of rando things. Uh, we are still set up for August 26th and 27th in Houston, Texas with the Whosoever's coming back in. We're going to have a big skate park event in Galveston and Houston. So that's there. Uh, the website for uh, onelovehtx.org is now live and refreshed. All the dates are on there, all the things you need to know, ways to support, ways to come out, hang out with us and have some fun. So as we get into this, I want to introduce some of you may not know. Uh, I'm I'm no noticing the older we get, the uh, uh, yeah, it's just <laughs> just the older we get. <laughs> so Sonny Sandoval has joined us here. Say hi, Sonny. What's up, fellas? <laughs> From the band mm. POD. Uh, it's funny because I do run across people. It's it's rare, but I do run across people like oh, I don't really know if I've heard that mm. band before, and, and then I'll go. Have you heard? Boom. Have you heard Youth of the Nation? And they're, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Been on tons of movies. I mean, that's the one thing. It's it's funny how many times I've turned on Netflix or something, and all of a sudden I hear a POD song. I'm like, look at that. So yeah. really cool. But had a ha have had an amazing run in your career with the whole mm -hmm. band and still going, mm -hmm. uh, going out there touring everything. So we're just welcome. Thank you for making some time today for us and coming to hang out with us. Thank so, you, man. Thanks for having yeah. me. So um, just like I did with Brian, uh, when I, we had Brian Welch on here, I, I told everyone. Where... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the, love... the lead guitarist for Nickelback. That's... Oh, oh, I know him. I definitely yeah. know him. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> my favorite one is, is when, whenever we're at an event and someone goes, someone, oh, yeah, my, I, my parents love you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or, dude, I used to listen to you guys back in junior high. <laughs> and, he look, and he looks older than me. And you're like, all right, right on, dude. <laughs> Sweet. <That's the> best. <laughs> so, yeah. So I mentioned, I mean, you, you guys, you, Brian, uh, you know, you have been in the public eye for a long time and you have testimonies all over the place. So I don't want to rehash a lot of that. Uh, mm -hmm. there, you can be found, you know, if you want to look into Sunday's testimony, there's a lot of them on YouTube. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised though, and I won't get into it, but, uh, you, you did, you didn't do a, I am second, uh, video like the rest of the guys did. I know Hosoi did one and, uh, Brian did one, a couple other guys did an I am second. Yeah. One, so that's where my, you my testimony isn't as interesting as those guys. They, they went, <laughs> they're like, my life is screwed up. I found Jesus and I'm doing much better now. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> or I did all I did all these bad things. I found Jesus, and I'm trying to live better now. So, right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, when it, when it comes to like those kind of testimonies, I I just don't have it. I'm just, I mean, I I I have a testimony, but you know, I've never been that kind of guy. I just I've always had a conviction in my heart. I've always had love for God, you know. Yeah. And not that I'm have done everything right or haven't made bad choices, but. I've always walked in a in a conviction that was is is godly, you know. It right. Doesn't it doesn't make me godly or righteous or holy? It just makes me, you know, trying trying to do my best. And I never really dove into a lot of that craziness because I just yeah. I just didn't have a desire for it. Really, I, I I've always desired like I don't know just godly things. I, I love I love that feeling. You know what I mean? It's a, it's yeah. a peace. 
it's a piece that I have. And so I'm, I'm still chasing it, you know, all these years later, I just, I constantly want that. I don't, I don't want the things of the world. I want the things that are eternal. That's awesome. So yeah. when, when would you say that started? Like, do you remember an age where that started to take root in you? I mean, it's funny because like I, I when I was a kid, like I, I, I know I said the the sinner's prayer, you know, but yeah. I, I don't I don't think it was till my mom passed away that I said, okay, now I just I really gotta start. I gotta I need I need something. I feel lost, you yeah. know. I don't I don't just believe I'm a Christian because I said this prayer, you know, I, I, I have to pursue it. And so I was nineteen when my when my mom passed, and that's when I kind of said, Hey dude, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this this is gonna be real to me. You know, right, right. And so I did that, but when I when I was a kid, I think, um, you know, once once I started to, because I came from a, 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 you know, a crazy family, and once I started to see them change, you know, one by one, they started going to church, and you know, they just changed. They went from, you know, partying and selling drugs and getting arrested to they started to grow up. Right. And once I saw that, I always had a respect. I said, okay, well, this God thing must be. He, he must be he must be real because I see it not because some you know preacher yelled at me on a street corner it was because yeah. I, I saw it <laughs> you get down my cat <laughs> <laughs> you're not invited <laughs> <laughs> so I just always had that kind of respect you know for for God and and I had a I had a a healthy fear you know not that God was gonna crush me or anything but I just like man I Man, if God is good, I don't want to disappoint him. I don't. I don't want to. You know, I want to try to be good too. You know. So, yeah. um, and again, I'm dude. I'm not saying that I've I've been good. <laughs> all right. my life. It's just, <laughs> I I hate that when people get up and then they feel, oh, you're so holy. You know, you you got this whole God thing figured out. I'm like, no, I don't. Dude. I just, yeah, no. Yeah, Sunny. Yeah. Sonny, I, I can relate to the boring testimony <laughs> situation, and and people ask me, you know, when were you saved? And I was. I just play it safe. I say 2000 years ago. And <laughs> yeah, I just, there you go. I like I, that one. I just try to move on, you know. <laughs> That's true. My no, counterpart I, I, here I, I, has I, my counterpart here has a stellar story, you know, and mine's yeah, like yeah. just <laughs> yeah. yeah. Every time we do the 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 things, the the who server stuff with Ryan and and head and I'm sitting next to him and I'm just like, "Man, I'm pretty boring." <laughs> 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 They're like, "I used to do these drugs and sleep with these girls and and do all these things." I'm like, <laughs> Not me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's still pretty. We were talking about that the other day. What a, an eclectic combination it is with you, Ryan, and and Brian. Uh, yeah. And I, I haven't had a chance to hang out with Lacey at all, but I, I, she's. I heard her testimony at Diamond Bar. It's pretty cool. But yeah, yeah. it's a good combination awesome. with you guys all together. I think we 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 balance each other out uh, pretty well, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, so go so going back to that one, the, the the one part of your story that always impacted me when I first heard it uh, was when you were like talking about leaving the hospital and walking to your car, mm. and that's when you were talking to God and going, "Okay, uh, I, I want to follow you." And uh, and correct me if I'm wrong if when I say this, it's some my paraphrasing, but you basically said, "Hey." Uh, I want you, but I don't want the God that I yeah. see out there with these preachers or whatever. I, I want the God my mama knew. Yeah, yeah. I like I said, I I believe that God was real. I, I grew up in a, you know, my grandmother was Catholic, and we went to church, you know, on Christmas Eve and, and Easter. You know, that's like do, do your ritual kind of yeah. thing. You know, and, and so I've always had a respect for God. I just I just didn't know Him intimately and personally the way we were we were created to to know Him. Yeah. And so when I started seeing my mom and all of them start changing and having this this joy and this this love for God, it, it was I've always I always respected it, you know. But you know, I'm hanging out with my friends. We're you know we're from the neighborhood, so it's you know you just kind of you just kind of watch. But when yeah. my mom got got sick and you know the, it was this was the day that she passed, but I watched her go through all of that stuff, and I knew that she was going to die and. So at first I thought I was just doing it for her. Like, you know what, I this is what my mom would want, you know? Yeah. And so when I'm leaving the hospital, um, that's when I just had a moment with God and I just said, okay, God, I, I, I believe in you. Like, I know you're real. and But I also know that this world paints a, a different picture of who I, I believe that you are. Cause I, I've seen you, you know, in, in, through my family. Yeah. Um, and I just said, man, I, I, I really do want to live for you, but I, I don't want to be, 
this westernized, you know, for, um, for, forgive me if this rubs anybody the wrong way, but this westernized, Americanized, blue-eyed, European, you know, uh, uh, conqueror, you know what I mean? Crusader, yeah, yeah. Yeah. enslaver, all these things in the, in the name of Jesus. And, I, and, and this TBN where I see people, you know, selling, you know, a million dollar holy water that will cure you of your cancer while my mom's dying of cancer. And, and she's practically a saint to me, but yet God's still going to choose to take her home. She, he's not going to heal her. He's not, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't, I didn't believe in all that stuff. Um, but I saw the real God, the real Jesus through, through my mom's pain and suffering. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, Lord, I can, I want to do this, but I don't want that Jesus. I don't want the world's Jesus. Yeah. I want, you know, I want my mom's Jesus. And so, you know, I made a little deal with the man upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> I said, if, if, you know, if, uh, I'll, I'll follow you if, if you show me who you are. I want you and no one else. And it's been a process. And here I am 30 something years later, and God's still showing me yeah. who he is. You know, and that's the beauty of it. And so that's when I just started walking with God. And I've had many ups and downs and many mistakes and failures. Um, but that's the grace of God. Yeah, that's so good. And, and we say that a lot on here, you know, because we, we have listeners from all over. We're, we're in 23 countries now. Uh, we just got Norway, by the way. I think I told you that. <laughs> you <like it>. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we get that a lot. I, I'll get messages and stuff. And they're just like, you know, this is this just is real the way y'all talk about it. And, you know, I can get behind this. And, and you know, basically mm -hmm. what you said, it's like I, this other stuff is kind of confusing me and it's really messed me up. So yeah. I think you do it well. Uh, all you guys do it well. You've been an impact on, I know, even just getting to know Brian and hang mm -hmm. out with him. And then he invited me to the first Whosoever's event. I mean, it changed my life to see yeah. people walking differently than the church way that I walked up. Because I knew I didn't like it, but I didn't know how else to do it. And y'all do you don't know how to break that cycle. You just, you just start to become them. Hey, brother, right. how are you doing? Hallelujah. God is good. You know. <laughs> Praise God, Amen. Yeah, and then yeah, and then you're leaving like, man, I just I don't get my life. <laughs> so, Sonny, let, let me ask you this: like, I always feel like there's a tension between the reverence for God, and I think you've mm -hmm. said that you've outlined that really, really well. And then there's like the relevance of God, like relevant to our lives right here and right now. And you you just touched on that too. And I, I sometimes in my observation, I feel like as as people, we tend or churches, really institutions will lean heavy in one direction or another. They'll try so hard to be relevant that they lose the reverence for who God is. Um, yeah. Or they will lean so hard in the reverence factor, they forget that like he's your friend, he knows you, he's walking in your day-to-day -day life, he gets your mess, he's not put off by it. And uh, when I first heard, you know, POD when I was in junior high, just kidding, <laughs> I wasn't in junior high. Um, I was so in I was <laughs> I was in college and like, and my mind was blown because it was the first time I feel like I heard music that was expressing faith in attention yeah. of reverence and relevance. Yeah. And, and I'm, so I'm just curious, like, was that a, was that like a concerted effort on y'all's part to go, okay, how are we going to represent our faith in a way that will catch people's ears that are, that are not, they don't know them. Or did it just naturally pour out of you guys? You know what I mean? Did yeah, it, it was it was naturally, but I, I think it was that it was that catch twenty two where I think we were just so free to be who we are before you you become religious. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's the trap that we we fall into. We we have this this God wants us to be in a relationship with him, but yet we, some, most, the majority of people are like, no, I, I want, I want a religion with you, God. I want a structure. I want to be this. I want to be looked away yeah. a certain way. Yeah. I want to be holy. And I, or not, I mean, we all want to be holy, but it's almost like to use to your advantage, you know, like I'm, I'm holier yeah. than you, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm not, or I'm not you, or I'm not as bad as you. Um, and so, you know, I think the problem came is, is when you, you do start to, not learn too much, but you, because we're always learning from God. But I think when we fall into those religious systems, then we're we we just start to mimic that. When it when when we were kids, it was just it was just such a, a pure thing. 
Yeah. You know, and but then but then you learn because I, I look back and I listen to these old old records and you gotta remember, you know, we were we were 19, you know what I'm saying? We were Marcos was 17, and here we are thinking that we're you know, we're preachers or you know, we're evangelists or we're we're gonna tell the world and, and it's it's a it's a healthy thing, but then you look back and you're like, Oh dude, I was so young, I was so immature. I was I will, you know, I, I kind of compare it to you know these kids that sign up, you know, to 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 be a marine or in the army and to to go to war. It's like there's so much training that has to be to be done, and yeah. in a mindset, and you have to become this this soldier before you can go out and lay your life down on the line. You get you're not just like, hey, you know, welcome to the marine, son. You know, here's right. <laughs> and, and you don't even show you don't even show him how to, he doesn't even he's never even held a weapon before. He has no survival training and he doesn't know what he's doing. And it's like, hey, go out and you know, defend us, defend your country, st stand up for something. Yeah. And as Christians, we're kind of the same way. We, we, you know, it, it, I don't think we're ever going to get over that. It's just called brokenness and humility where you just sit before God. And, and, and I'm doing that all these years later where it's like, Lord, I don't have nothing figured out. I can't believe you have used me to do some pretty cool things, you know? Um, yeah. cause all I was, all I wanted to do was, was follow you and get close to your heart. And all of a sudden, here it is 30 something years later. I'm like, man, it's been a cool, it's yeah. been a cool journey, but I can't sit back and be like, dude, this is, man, I, I, I'm so good. You know, I have it all figured yeah. out. Me and me and God are, are dude, you know, I, I know exactly everything God's doing and it's, it's not like that, man. So I think he just kind of, the Bible says to be childlike. And I think, you know, it's those, when we see child or we have our, our kids where they're just like, why daddy, why daddy? Yeah. <laughs> and that's, I think God, that's how we should be towards God. Like, Okay, God, I'm trying to figure this out, but yeah. why this and why that? You know, because, not us. Go ahead. Well, just on the heels of that, I guess I wanted to ask you then, in light of you know, you kind of touched on how people get so, like it becomes more about religious and religious structures. And by the way, I, I think I think Jesus in many cases would not get hired in many of our churches. <laughs> oh no, never. He would not be able never. to get a job. So I'm curious, like like just with your music, you know, with with what you guys have done, your body of work. <laughs> What do you think is most misunderstood from when you're dealing with churches specifically that are more kind of <laughs> like more in that religious bent? Like, what do you think is most, yeah, just misunderstood in what, what you guys do? Well, you know, we out of a church, weren't you? I remember that. Well, yeah. The first, first time we played, we didn't, you. we didn't even play churches. Um, we were playing bars. We weren't even allowed. We weren't even old enough to get into bars. You know, we were playing backyard parties. Um, we were playing all secular events, you know. But the moment we got asked to play a church, because the two of the guys that were in the band had went to youth group to, with that church, and they shut us down um, halfway through the song because they were like, "Oh no, 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 no! This is this is not of God," you know. <laughs> and so. But that's the thing is, is that you have a, a system where you have a people thinking that they know, they know without a shadow of doubt, 100 percent, what is of God. And if you do not follow, then you are a dirty, rotten sinner, heathen, and you're going to hell because you do not agree with me and uh, and him, you know, yeah. where instead of being in a, in a humble state of, I'm just trying to learn and I want to know who who God is, you know, so it's it's um. Yeah, it's it's a crazy thing. We we've always got kind of got that um, um, what's the word? We've, we've always had a resistance, um, mm -hmm. from God. I mean, not from God, from 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 the People. institution of yeah. of church. You know. So, yeah. but that's that's the problem. I mean, I, but we've I've seen it as I've you know just as I've gotten older, where I think it's a good thing. People they they want to they want to know God. They want to go deep. They want to be they want to be what they're. We're not, or what they want to be. You get these, like, I, I've met like addicts, and these guys have come from the street and they want a real change and it's genuine. But that change comes over time. You know, like I, I've said this before, like you get saved on Sunday and then, you know, baptized Monday, uh, you know, telling the world how to live by Wednesday, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and, and whatever. And then, and then, and then, and then backslidden by the next weekend. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> It, it, I hate God, <laughs> you know, at, after that point, it's like, but it's such a process. And I get the fact that you, we don't want to be the old man because the Bible promises that we are a new creation. You know, God is, 
He's forgiven us. He's cleansed us. We're we're a new creation, and we want that. But that's that doesn't happen over like, with just a snap of the finger. That's yeah. that happens with knowing who God is, and that can that takes a lifetime. I mean, yeah. for me, it does. I'm maybe I'm a slow learner. You know what I'm saying? It takes a, <laughs> it takes a lifetime. You know, I'm still I'm still learning. But yeah. people, you know, you, like I said, you walk into church and you're you were that guy that was just oh man. You're You're known. You know. You're the. You're the bad guy, and, and you don't want to be that guy anymore because you're not. Because God saved you, clean, cleans you up, and and you're you're a new creation. Um, but you should let God shout that from the rooftops. You should. Your actions should show that, not like, oh look at me. And so, when that becomes religion, and that's when you start telling people how to live their lives. That's when you start telling people yeah. what to do. And this is what God says. Like, wait a minute, what? I just saw you last Sunday. You know, walk up to the front of the church and get saved. You know, like you're. Now you're the know-it-all all of a sudden, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, dude, yeah. come on. And so, but people see that. People, the, the, the world wants to see authenticity. They want to see, they want to see these conversations, you yeah. know, because how many people walk into church or don't go to church because like, dude, I just don't feel comfortable. Like, like the church is the one place you should feel comfortable, comfortable in going to. But why have we made it not so? Right. I'm like, if I'm if I'm sick. And I, I know that, oh, dude, I, man, my stomach's been hurting and, you know, I, I really need to get to the hospital. I'm not going to be like, oh, dude, the hospital just make me so uncomfortable. You know, like, I don't, I don't want to go there. I hate doctors. <laughs> you, you, don't, you have no choice. You know, you, dude, yeah. I, I need to see a doctor now. Well, I don't care it, if I'm uncomfortable. Yeah, it's experience. I mean, you think about the dentist. Most people are terrified of dentists. Why? Because they, they got poked too hard or whatever it was. And they're just, that's what they're, they're just torture tools. Yeah, that's they, all they have. That's what yeah, they yeah. remember. And so, so I think that's what it is too. In the church, is you have these experiences. I've had them. Uh, I ran from it, you know, and, and it's funny because even when we were building this One Love HTX and the Whosoever's HTX out here, I had a massive, massive network uh, of churches. And so, when I first brought Brian in for Loud Crazy Love, that was kind of the 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 catapult the, uh, to launch this. And then as soon as everyone heard what we wanted to do, they were like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait, wait! Now this yeah. is this is too crazy." And it was the questions were like, uh, "Well, we know his testimony, but we can't bring him here. We don't want to be associated with it because what if he falls?" And <laughs> and that comment what? alone, I was like, "Wait, wait! <laughs> what if he falls? Is that?" What if you fall? What? Yeah, what you fall. <laughs> uh, like, that's so ridiculous, dude. Yeah, so, or, yeah. But, you you make so many statements at that point. Like you're you're so much better. You're ne that's never gonna happen to yeah. you. But but even if he did fall, like would, wouldn't yeah. we go after him? Like wouldn't we be yeah. like, dude, what's up, bro? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, but the beautiful mm -hmm. part about it is, it opened up a whole another network that. I didn't, I mean, you met Rev Rod when you were out here and Rev was the first guy. I mean, I sat down with, and it wasn't probably two minutes into the conversation. I told him what we were trying to do. And he goes, I'm in, go ahead yeah. finish, but I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> and then sitting down with this guy, I remember I was introduced to him by, and, and you know, uh, Pastor Greg in yeah. Arkansas. So oh, the, yeah. they're, they're friends. So they, he introduced us. And we sat down and that's how the podcast got started. It's just like, and he's a Lutheran awesome. pastor. I'm just saying. Yeah, that. yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, 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 this this interview's over. <laughs> I gotta go, guys. I, <laughs> I can't be associated. <laughs> That's but so that's stupid. the we're so we're so used to it and so programmed and so but but it's so cool to see it changing like that yeah. and and this is these are the things that are that are doing it. So yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, it's so funny, man. Yeah, I but, just, I mean, bro, when I the same thing, I, I get confused with people because I'm like, man, what, what gospel? You know, even if you're not, you know, whatever. Even if you just read the the gospels alone, like, what gospel are you reading? What what Jesus character are you reading about? Right. Like, I I, I just don't I just don't get it. All this division, and and you said it perfectly. Like, if Jesus walked. Through our church today, nobody, the majority of us so-called believers and Christians wouldn't even recognize him, you know, and yeah. that's that's just the sad truth, you know. Yeah, it's scary. We'd be you know, too busy I, pushing him to the back of the, you know, <laughs> or yeah, checking yeah. his membership or where do you belong, <laughs> and you know, maybe you could sit in the side room because you you don't quite look like everybody else, you know. Just, right. 
It's ridiculous. You smell. Um, <laughs> you smell. <laughs> <laughs> Homeless over there, please. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of of the theory that a lot of what we're seeing in culture is not really representative of a majority of people. I'm starting to believe mm -hmm. that what we see happening, kind of the clash in culture, a lot of times I, I'm wondering if it's not the people just with the biggest bullhorn, the biggest microphone, the most money behind them, the biggest stages to at times to throw things out that may feel like they're antagonistic to Christians and Christian faith. And so I'm really curious with you on here because I mean, you deal with a ton of people all mm -hmm. over the country. So in a way you're, you know, you're kind of a man of the people, you know, you have your, your feet actually firmly on the ground, face to face, eyeball to eyeball. Um, you know, it can be really easy to get sucked into what our media is telling us or the culture around us, but you as somebody who's getting time with, really just tons of people all over our country. What, mm. what do you sense about people, their faith, their heart? Mm. Is there a heart, uh, a resurgence, a desire to grow in their walk with Christ? Do they, are they wanting, you know, where, where do you just kind of sense as someone who's probably getting in front of more people than probably 80% of pastors combined mm. and probably deal with, I don't know, I don't even, can't even quantify it, how many people you may deal with in a given, you know, tour that don't walk into a church at all. Um, so like, what, what do you see? You know, what do you see happening in the, the heart of people that come to your shows, the heart of people that are you're interacting with, where do you think they're at with their faith or the desires of faith? I mean, I, I think the majority of, and this is what I've, I've seen for so many years that and I've said this so many times before, like the majority of people do not have a problem with, Jesus, right? Because they they're not encountering Jesus, you know. But the, the stories are great. But it is the institution of Christianity and church and us who have rubbed people so wrong, and, and for all these reasons and the things that we're talking about, where they can't buy into that. But if they were to know again, talking about the Gospels and who the character yeah. of Jesus is, the most the, the world is in they're in yeah i think it was i think it was was it gandhi who said something like you know i, I, don't, I don't have a problem like jesus is awesome i mean i'm paraphrasing <laughs> so he said, i don't have a problem with jesus you know it's my man but 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 it's his followers i got a problem with yeah and that's just that you know i mean you can talk to people all you know on tour and stuff and it's like i mean it's not like that's all only conversations we have sure, but sure, yeah. i realize that i realize that there you know there are more conversations so i just want them to know who i am and i think me building relationships with people throughout these years um has been consistent and then at some point they're just like man so i like dude i you know i tell me about jesus man or like dude i i i I dig it, but they they see the they see the normal stuff. Like even now with social media, you know, it's like, dude, I love watching you, you know, with your family, your kids, or you know, I, I see you're coaching your kids, you know, all these things that are just normal stuff, not just me with you know the, with my big Bible and you know all my crosses <laughs> up, you know, all this stuff. We try to paint this picture. It's like that's not reality, man. Yeah, they just want to know that you're you're normal. But we live in a society today where, dude, people want hope. They want answers. They want to be loved. There's, there's. They want to know who they are. We, we are the most confused generation ever right now, yeah. and so people want it. It's not like there's not um, uh, a desire for that. You know, when when we go and we speak at the schools, you know, a lot of times we're going into public schools. So you know, we we know that you have to be careful of the things you say, and you know, we you can't go in and say Jesus. You know what I mean? But we're getting. Our schools are getting so bad that you have teachers and principals in these public schools that are saying, please come and talk to our kids. And some of them are even putting their, their jobs on the line because they're like, man, I don't care. I, I, I see what these kids go through every day and they need hope. And I don't care if I get in trouble. I don't care if I get fired, you know, because these 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 kids need they need Jesus or they, you know, they, they need what, what you guys are trying to offer, you know. Yeah. And so. It's yeah. um, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a crazy thing, man. But but I I think we just have to do better, you know. But I think we just have to be authentic and 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 real, 
And yeah, and you know, that, that's something you you've definitely done well. Uh, and I think as as humans and as the church, we we like to get that badge, you know, like right. And, and I hear it all the time, like you know, last Sunday, Easter Sunday, we had three hundred and twenty five people come. To, it's like, oh yeah, give their life to the Lord. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like, come on, like, but. And they, they're expecting that. So when you when we go out, I think what most people expect Christians to do is to is to be that bullhorn, to be that that Bible. That, oh, they're so boring. They don't talk about it. And I was that guy at one time. I remember I lost some really good friends because they were like, yeah, there was a time, bro, when you just nothing else came out of your mouth yeah, <laughs> except, yeah. you know, your, uh, everything you're doing in ministry and what you're doing. Oh, yeah. You just you just weren't normal. And I'm like, yeah, I, I get that. And I think the biggest impact we make and you do it well is just hanging just and being yeah. the ex being a good example you know it's not like you're trying you're not going to you're not going out there going okay today i'm going to show them how to be a good father and today yeah. i'm going to you're, <laughs> you're just doing doing you you know yeah yeah and through that well, people go what what's different about him that that's yeah okay let me just say this this has happened to you guys too i'm curious if this is one connection point what? when people find out i'm a pastor oh I get oh, asked yeah. the same three questions. Just, do you smoke? Do you drink? Do you drink? And do you cuss? <laughs> there it is. It's a trifecta. That's always well, like, what is with that three? That's always yeah. the list. Well, because as religious people, we've said these are the do's and the don'ts. And people are like, dude, I, I don't even the do's and the don'ts aren't gonna save me. Right. The, the do's and the don'ts yes. aren't going to bring me out of my depression. The yes. do's and the don'ts aren't going to make me feel loved. The do's and the don'ts don't doesn't forgive me. The do's and the don'ts didn't die on a cross for me. Yeah. <laughs> the do's and the don'ts yep. doesn't want to have an intimate relationship with me. So that's where we get it wrong. It's yeah. like, dude, we, we cannot change anybody. But that's what it's based on. And I think a lot of people, again, that don't know who God is, they're just like, I can never live up to that standard. Like, see, and I never answer that question now without saying, "Do you have a light?" <laughs> <laughs> People say, <laughs> "I've gotten that. I've gotten that question too." Like, bro, I mean, whatever. It's not so much the same, but before, you know, it's like, hey, they're like, <laughs> now I'm just like, bro, I just don't care. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be 50. I just don't care. You know, I was like, hey, bro, before I was like, hey, bro, do you drink? I'm like, I don't drink with drunks. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, all right, cool. But, you know, but again, whatever. I wouldn't say that to a holy person because, of it. oh, my gosh. <laughs> hey, my cat wants to be interviewed. Come on. Oh, man. Oh, That's man. awesome. Well, it's, I, I, re I remember. Um, so the first time I was introduced to you guys, uh, it was actually it was a girl, two, two really sweet girls, uh, Cece and I can't remember her cousin's name, but they used to cut Marcos's hair. Okay. Okay. And so, uh, I was, I was doing shout public out to Marcos. Yeah. Shout out to Marcos. What's shout up? Marcos? So I, I was, <laughs> I was, uh, speaking all over the world doing, uh, the stuff that I used to do and I had my PowerPoint on and everything and I'd finished speaking and I shut my, uh, my PowerPoint off and my, my background screen, was I believe it was a picture from when angels and serpents dance mm -hmm. of you guys, you know, up there. And so she comes up to me afterwards and she goes, Hey, do you like POD? And I go, Oh, I love POD. I said, that's uh, like changed my life. And cause my wife is all about Michael W. Smith and this and that. When I discovered <laughs> this, like, this is what I can follow, you know, until that nice. it was straight up Metallica, Pantera, the whole bit. Yeah. yeah. No. So this but was, but then you got holy and you had to give all that stuff up, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Burn them all. Burn it all. <laughs> right. So she goes, Oh, that's cool. And then she just walks off, you know? So I come down in the hotel lobby uh, later on, we're all going out to dinner, hanging out. And she, she, I hear that her calling my name and she goes, Hey, come over here. And she's got her phone and I go, what's up? And she goes, here, I want you to talk to somebody. And I go, okay. And gets on the phone and I, I go, what's up? And they go, hey, Daniel, this is Marcos. And I was like, Marcos who? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. she, goes, she goes, it's Marcos from POD. She goes, I cut his hair. And I go, shut up. Like this. Yeah. I'm like, uh, so now I feel like a total dweeb, you know? I'm like, oh, hi, Marcos. <laughs> So he goes, he goes, Hey, what if you're, I hear you're from Houston. We're going to be playing in Houston when we're out there. Stop by yeah. and uh, we'll, we'll get you some tickets. So I ended up bringing y'all a bunch of hair care. This was like, I think 2000, 
2008 or something like that. Seven. Crazy. I don't know. It was a long time ago. But um, but in that moment, I remember we were standing behind stage and I think uh, Justice, right, is your your son. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was with you. And I thought that was the coolest thing. I was like, dude, your kid comes on the road with you. And you're like, yeah, I, I like, I want to bring him out here and I, I want to yeah. be a father. It wasn't you yeah. saying, I want to show these guys that you can be a father too. It was, I just want to be a father to my boy, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I was like that right there That's cool. is the example Very that you're cool. not trying to do. You're just being you. And through yeah, that, yeah. I'm sure you've had not just rando people, but people in the industry. I know Ryan Reese was one of them. Didn't he call you when he kind of mm -hmm. like, he remembered, like, I got to talk to Sonny. Yeah. It's There's like something they, it's, there. All, all my, these guys, my, my friends, you know, it's like when they're, you know, bef before they have their, their Jesus moment, you know, it's when, when they have that, they remember, oh, dude, I, I know somebody. <laughs> you know, like, I, I, I know somebody, I got a friend on, on the other side. Let me, let me yeah. hit them up. And, and I, I still get it to this day, man, where, you know, I'll get random texts from people. And it's like, hey, dude, I've been, I've been going to church, man. I just kind, of, you know, trying to figure this whole thing out. I'm like, dude, that's cool, brother. Like, just keep yeah. doing it, man. Keep, yeah. keep, you know, keep going for it. It's like, I'm not texting them and calling. Them, hey, dude, did you go to church? Did you go to Easter? Yeah, <laughs> Easter yeah. service. It's just more like being that, just that friend. But they also know that I'm, I'm, I'm real too. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not like, but I get that. It's such, a, it's such a learning process. Like, I think that's the religious side of us where. You know, and I and I went through that where you want you want people to think, hey, dude, I'm a Christian. You know, I know God, and this is kind of what it looks like. But but really, if you're being honest with yourself, you're like, man, I'm just just trying to figure this thing out. So yeah. it's kind of like a, it's it's a it's a tug of war. When I started bringing justice on the road, like I had taken so much time away from music because I was ready to quit because I was like, nothing is more important than my relationship with God. And so for for me at that moment, I felt like quitting. This side, the industry side was something I had to do to just get closer to God again. But the closer I got to God, I, it was like I, I knew God was telling me, dude, what are you doing? Like, I'm with you everywhere you go. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I, you, don't, you don't have to work at a church to have a relationship with me. You don't, you don't have to, to, to you know, be at a, at a service or a Bible study, you know, 10, 10 days a week. It's, I'm with you wherever you go. And so once I started to learn that and I, I brought my son on tour, I stopped trying to do it for show, if that makes sense. I stopped, I stopped caring because you do, you have a burden for people. Like, hey man, everybody I see, I want them to know Jesus like I know. I want them to get saved. They're, that'll never change. Yeah. But I can't go up to them with that type of, you know, they'll just think I'm a weirdo. Like, dude, get out, get out of my face, dude. You know what I mean? Like, stop bothering me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but for me, I stopped, I always feel that way, but I stopped trying to, to, to make it work, if that makes sense. I stopped trying yeah. to make them um, see something in me so that God can do what he does and that they would be like, oh, I'll, that's what I want. I want what Sonny has. I stopped, not that I stopped caring about that, but I stopped doing it in a sense that, dude, all I care about is that, dude, my son is with me on tour. I can't even be on this tour right now if he's, if he's not with me. And I just want to be the best daddy that I can possibly be. Not yeah. the best Christian that I want that... So the world sees not the best Jesus follower. So so I can save the world. It was like, you know, sorry, like really nobody matters right now to me except my son. Yeah. I mean, and my, my my kids and my family. I got to a point where the burden of the world was not on my shoulders anymore. But it it was for a while. And I think that's as you grow, or you know, people that become Christians, that's why they try to put on this act because I think it's genuine that they really want the world to know who Jesus is, but we do it in such a way that it doesn't really bring honor and glory to God. It brings honor and glory to ourselves because we're trying to look a, a certain way. But yeah. at some point, I just, so, I mean, I don't fault them for that. I just think we we just got it mixed I up, think, man. I think when you a, should be the best daddy, you know? Yeah. I think it's a growing thing too. In, in any it of is. Our, in our walks and, and you'll see it too. Like in, uh, you know, we, as humans, right. I mean, you do a lot of psychological stuff with, with, uh, the doc. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's, we all want to uh, be noticed. We all yeah. want to, uh, you know, accomplish something and be recognized. Mm -hmm. We, we, we want to be loved. Right. Yeah. And, and that, 
that ultimate love is going to come from, from Jesus. And until we know that, you know, we strive to do something and that's when you see it in church. And that's why you see it a lot in like, Oh gosh, some of these, uh, these uh, healing people, um, mm-hmm. it's crazy, you know, where, where they're just, I mean, I remember sitting at, at an event and I saw a girl who that, that was her identity. And, and it, I was praying for her. it hurt me. I didn't, I wasn't yeah. like, you know, get this girl out. He was like, Oh gosh, Lord, wake her up. Because all she was trying to do was push people down, like to have an experience with her. Yeah. You can see her hand, and that, so you can see some people fighting her. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, I said, don't fall. Don't fall. <laughs> oh man. I well, know. Wait, you just said, well, I think Sonny, what you basically articulated beautifully is the difference between living under the law and living under grace. Mm-hmm. And when you're living under grace, you just get to exist and live out life with Jesus in the middle of it versus that yeah. early on thing. It's all about behavior modification and getting it right. But it's, it's, you already said it. It's just a burden. Yeah. It's just throwing weight. It is. That we aren't created to carry, you know, it's, yeah, yeah. it's, it's, um, I, I mean, and I think we're, we're always trying to figure this out, but I mean, I think for me, the, the, one of the biggest wedges I think in my relationship with God was, was carrying that burden. You know, it's like, Hey, um, I always remember that I use this as an example, like, you know, like those root beers where it looks like a bottle of beer. Yeah. It's like that. It's like that kind of stuff. Like you can't even have a, a thing of root beer because you're like, I, I don't want to stumble anybody. <laughs> and then the older you get, root you're like, beer. Oh, root beer. Stumbles. Yeah. Well, we're almost called POB, you know? I think. P-O-B. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but, dude, but you've seen that. I, I've seen, I've seen, I've watched. I've watched Christian guys on podcasts or whatever, and then they have like, this isn't a beer, by the way. I, you know, it's, it's just, <laughs> and the fact that the fact that you have to explain that is so like we are so far off the mark, you know. And and that's what I love about being around the Hoosovers and stuff. It's like you can be real, but even when I'm around my guys, like I'm more free when I'm with my guys because they just don't care. Like they're not they're not caught up in that stuff anymore. And it's funny because yeah. interesting. Speaking of Marcos, he said something. He was he was saying it would be so cool to have like a you know like a, if we had a reality show and you know he's 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 we're making he's making light of it and stuff but he said something about that really kind of convicted me in a way but it also it just made me think dude you're, you're so true because he they they get the the Christian side of me they get like dude you're you're a community guy you're a humanitarian you 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 want to you're a ministry guy you want to see people get saved but when I get to just be one of the guys with them, they're like, that's the best guy ever. Yeah. Do a hold on, hold on. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> because even for me for so long, even with my guys, like when we went, you know, we 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 learned rock and roll together. And when all the struggles and the temptations and stuff came, we dude, we went through all that stuff. But the side of me that was still kind of like, man, I don't want to. I don't want to do these things and I don't want to be a part of this. And, and you, you just start, you stop being human at some point, you know, if that, if that makes sense. And, and I love that my guys are like, dude, I'm, I'm barely getting free with them that I can be around them. And Hey, yeah. Okay. If Sonny cusses or wait, they're not going to crucify me for it. You know what I mean? If, if Sonny has a beer, they're not going to crucify me for it. If I have a cigar, they're not. And, and I'm telling you what, man, that freedom I mean, there's different levels of freedom, but there's a freedom that 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 is just like, man, it's nice when you can just be yourself because I I I already know who I am, so yeah. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I know I know that I love Jesus. Yeah, I know yeah. that I love my wife and my my kids and I and I and I love people and like, why do we have to 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 be this perfect kind of image when I think the world actually just wants to see broken people in need of a savior? Instead of these perfect people who, wait a minute, who, who do you serve? You know, yeah. What, yeah. Who, who's, who, who's your God? Who yeah. do you follow? Because you guys got it all figured out by your own law, by your own doctrine, by your own word. And so, you know, I, I like that. I'm going to go to practice and I get to be with my guys and, and, and just be normal and have fun and make music. But yeah. they also get, they also know when, they know that I have a different calling in my life. You know, they know when when somebody comes up to me, you know, outside the bus or whatever, and they want to talk about Jesus. They also know that that's me too. Right. You know, they they, right. they know that, and and I, you know, I'm I'm grateful for the relationships that I have now with them because 
Um, I think for a while, or I think as religious people, we, we want everybody to think we have it figured out because I think we genuinely believe that, well, if they think we have it figured out, they'll see this transformation and, and they'll follow God because look at the miracle that he's done in my life when really they just want to see someone who's genuine, authentic. Yeah. And I still battle with that too. You know, I, I'm yeah. still like, man, you know, should I go? I went to a comedy club the other night to go watch a, a, an artist. And then, you know, in the back of your mind, you still kind of think like, hey, is this, should I, should I do this, should I not? And I'm so, and maybe I shouldn't have, you know what I mean? But <laughs> at some point you got to just stop like, oh dude, yeah. this is such a live and learn process. And, you know, it might've been a little crude, you know? And I'm like, yeah, maybe next time I, maybe I shouldn't have been here, but <laughs> it's, at least it's a live and learn experience and not like just everything is yeah. evil. Yeah, You know, I, I keep learning from a lot, like this interview is another learning experience for me because I learned this from Daniel all the time. It I am always taken back by the religious burdens that you oh, guys dude. all experienced. And I, all I can figure is, A, I've been living under a rock. <laughs> um, and B, the real advantage to just, un, for lack of a better word of saying it, leading a small church. Right. Mm -hmm, where I, mm -hmm. I just... Frankly, I don't even know if anyone is paying attention outside of the 70 people who show up. Maybe you and, are the religious and guy. maybe 10. <laughs> maybe that's yeah, what no. it is. Right? All, no. no wonder no one will shake my hand after church. No. Um, so I, I think you like, hit something there, bro. Yeah, I, I think I. it's just always the one thing they all have in common is if to put it crass, it, it's they all have a big stage and big lights and big dollars. And yeah. and so those same burdens. It, it's just interesting what you guys describe in your experiences. And you've touched on that too. This unbelievable weight that's put upon you. It's that's just baffling mm -hmm. to me. And it's almost makes me more curious. Like what behind that, what feeds that, what makes it's people feel like they have to pretend and whole groups of people feeling like they have to live a certain way or else it's a strange, it's the religiousness, the pharisaical nature yeah. that still exists today. And I mean, I can honestly say, I mean, I smoked for years, uh, mm -hmm. I, not, not pot, not, not that I would have a yeah. problem saying that I just couldn't smoke it because it made me depressed and, and paranoid, but I smoked cigarettes like crazy. And I hid all the time. Cause yeah. I, in my hometown, like when I was on the road, it didn't matter because, but I was in my hometown. I was afraid someone from the church was going to see me smoking. And you know when yeah. I was able to quit smoking finally? When I finally said, screw it. I don't care. Who knows? Like, yeah. I'm so tired yeah. of hiding. And and then I started to hate it naturally. It's like, oh, this is weird. Yeah. Like when I finally took it out of hiding. And it's funny because it's another POD moment. Uh, we, we used to do programs a lot in um, uh, House of Blues. No, not House mm -hmm. of Blues. Uh, what's, the, what's the hotel in San Diego? Hard Rock. Hard Rock. Yeah. So we used to do programs there all the time. And my suite would be the suite that was the, uh, oh gosh, I can't even remember the name. It's some band anyways. But we were we were coming downstairs and people knew that I liked POD. And they were like, oh yeah, uh, I, I, Wov and, and, uh, and Trey and Marcos, they come here all the time to the bar. And when I heard that statement, I went, what? They come to a bar? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And and we actually saw them there. We didn't we didn't go bug them or anything, but I remember looking at them going, they can do this. Like they're not acting a fool. They're just yeah. hanging out with friends and and it's okay. Like, why is it not okay in my life that yeah. I can't just hang and 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 just be me? So yeah. it's it's weird though. It's the religiousness and the fair sequel nature for sure. Well, listen, I, I man. Think, I, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I said I think I think eventually, I mean, only because you know I, I'm old. <laughs> but when you, after all these years, that, that religiousness, you know what I mean? That, that law is what ends up taking most people down in the long run. Cause they're like, yeah. bro, I can't, you know, I, I can't, I can't live, I can't live by these standards, these rules, but that's not God's standards. But yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, but it's that, that pressure. And I think, I think what you said, bro, is like, you're, you're onto something. You have your own community, and it's like it really is a community. It really is a church. It really is a group of people living together, doing the Jesus thing. But then you get into these other platforms and these big churches, and a lot of it just becomes. I mean, I mean, I've said it before. It's a business. Mm -hmm. So, so you have to follow the rules to keep your business afloat. You know what I mean? Like what you were talking about earlier, Daniel. Like, oh, dude, you brought head around. And it's like, dude, they're they're mostly offended by 
or they're mostly worried about offending their big donors. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If, 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 if the person who ties a million dollars a year hates metal and, and is very old school, you know what I mean? And, and yeah. is 90 years old and, and hates tattoos and hates all that stuff. It's like, well, you're not going to bring that guy as a guest on, on, on your, on your holy stage. Right. Because, right. because that's just, the, that's just the truth. Because that person who donates a million dollars a year was the first person to pull you aside and say, oh, let me talk to you, Pastor. <laughs> let me let me let me let me let me set something straight. Yeah. And 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 and, and unfortunately, those pastors don't have the oomph to be like, you know what? I don't care what you think. I know, I know this guy. I know his heart. People are gonna be blessed by him. People are gonna be the God's gonna use him. But they'd say, all in the back of their mind, they're thinking, "Dang, man, I ain't get that million dollars a year." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, well, yes, uh, Mister, you know, Mister Smith. Um, we'll, 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 we'll pray about it. We'll pray about it, and um, you know, and eventually, well, yeah. Eventually, well, so, so, Sonny, for what it's worth, uh, I'm freshman in college, rural Nebraska. At the bottom of the dorm is a lone drum set, and I would play mm -hmm. to Southtown. Nice. And rock this party, yeah, yeah. and alone down there with headphones on. So I, I want to thank you, man, because you were obedient to the unique voice that God gave you. And for what it's worth, you're talking to one person who actually ended up becoming a pastor and part of the machine. Um, <laughs> but you know, like that was that was huge for me in my development in my faith was feeling like someone mm. else had an edge and a voice that mm. I connected to because I didn't connect to a lot of the stuff that was out yeah. in mainstream yeah. Christian music at all. I felt like, oh, wow, someone kind of sounds the way that I'm thinking and feeling about awesome. faith and life and culture and how they intersect. And, um, you know, and then I go on to be a youth minister and youth of the nation. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we, we played that one night just connecting kids to what was going on with the shootings and stuff. That was even 15 years ago. So yeah. um, mm -hmm. I just want to thank you, man. Don't I don't want you to think that, you know, the whole institution while it, it it no doubt needs to be reformed and while many are absolutely missing the mark uh i don't want to get you you know have you step out of this interview not knowing that there are those of us that are pastoring churches oh, yeah. that you can oh, influence and bless. i i do thank you for that and i and i uh i i do know that and that's what makes it those are the things that make this so much it's just so worth it because i do know that we are like-minded in those ways, you know. Um, I just like coming on your podcast and venting, that's all. <laughs> but I, I, I do, do it I, all the yeah. time. We do it all that's the time. Why, <laughs> that's why we have whosoever events so we can get together and vent about how, right. uh, you know, everybody <laughs> well, sucks, you know. <laughs> I, I am going to come out with a, with a brand of beer called P.O.B. It's coming. <laughs> It's coming, P.O.B. It, and I'm just, it already it already sounds horrible. Yeah, and then and then it's gonna have a picture of head like in a deep prayer. Oh, full moment. Yeah, exactly. It's gonna connect it all. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I know funny. you gotta get to practice. Like, so we're gonna just a couple more questions that we're gonna let yeah, you yeah. know. Um, the the youth of the nation. I want people mm -hmm. to know about this. So uh, it's funny because that was one of your most popular songs from the yeah. band. And you started a foundation. Can you tell us a little bit about it, what you're doing out there and how you're connected? Yeah, we, we've been for so many, I mean, man, almost 13 years now, we've been doing a lot of the whosoever stuff. It's been such a blessing, but it's always been outside my community. You know what yeah. I mean? It's always like we've been going and going and going. And so right before COVID, um, I started the foundation with hopes of being, this is funny thing because I always use it as an example. I, I'm like, I want it to be like a YMCA, but more um, creative arts and music, you know? Yeah. Um, so I wanted to have my own building and all this stuff where kids can come in, you know, be tutored, mentored, you know, and then all the fun stuff would be, you know, at the back of the room with the guitars and the amps and the skate park and all this stuff. Um, but that's then COVID happens and no one no one wants to be inside. So it's right. like, okay, we we just start off little things and in my neighborhood, there's no real estate. There's no that's a that's a long term plan. It's gonna take a lot of money. You know, yeah. there's no real estate where these kids could just walk up to and have a place of their own. But recently, um I partnered up with the YMCA in in my old neighborhood at this by the schools that I grew up in, and they're just 
they're looking to rebrand. They, you know, they have nobody because of COVID. No one's going, no one's using the gym, no one's using the pool. There's rooms are empty. And they're like, how can we get together and start where kids can come and just, you know, be, create we create after school programs. And so as of right now, that's I feel like that's where I'm supposed to be right now is, is, yeah. is, you know, we're even, we're even talks of having like a teen center um, and we're creating um, music programs where, you know, I can have someone like head come in and all our connections come in. We yeah. can do, you know, guitar lessons, singing lessons. Everybody that we know is offered, dude, I'm down to teach, you know, computer graphics. I'm down to teach art. And so we're here for, I'm, this is for my community where I'm at. And hopefully we can build a, a blueprint that can move out through, yeah. you know, more urban communities. And, and But this is for the underprivileged kids that just, that are in the hood that, you know, that's, they think that that's their destiny. You know, that's yeah. that's their future. I'm going to live and die in the hood. And, and you know, they have no, uh, they just, there is, there is no hope for something better, you know, yeah. <laughs> they're a that's product cool. of their environment. Yeah. So we're, cool. Cool. there's a, there's that's a group here. There's a group here, a friend of mine, uh, Eyes on Me Inc., and they have a place in in Brookshire called the Hangar, and it's an old airplane hangar yeah, on this land crazy. and everything. But the funny story here's a word of encouragement: keep to it. Yeah, I know you will. Just just God keep leading you. Mm -hmm. uh, but he, one of the guys, was in a coffee shop, and people knew the vision. And when he walked in there, he was talking to the, the barista, and the barista goes, "Hey." You know, I've heard your story a lot and what y'all are trying to do out here because 90% of the kids out there are fatherless, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. So they, there was a guy yeah. sitting there in the coffee shop and they go, that dude over there needs to hear your story. And so he called him over there and he said, hey, you need to hear this guy's story. And so they just started talking. By the end of that conversation, the guy goes, hey, I got this massive plot of land over here. I don't <laughs> I know that. what to do with, with it. I've been wanting to give back to the community. I want something like this. And they, they transformed this whole place to that where now wow. it's a cool. place where they, so cool. they feed the hungry. The kids come in after school. They have mentoring. I was a mentor yes. for years there. I started a skate program there for them, all kinds of stuff. It's, it's amazing. So keep to it. So yeah, man. if people want to learn excited. more about it, is it, is it euthanation.org or.com or what is it? I think it's, um, euthanation <laughs> found <laughs> <laughs> There's so many orgs, man. Like, I think it's youth of the youth of the nation foundation.com. Okay, cool. <laughs> cool. And there's my hat too. Though. I'm representing. Yeah, <laughs> man. That's awesome. <laughs> so cool. Cool. Um, and then second, music. Like uh I, I know you have a side project. Most people probably don't know. Do you want to even talk about that? What Yeah, little... yeah. No, I, I I did it during COVID. I mean, we were, you know, we thought we'd only be out for two months, you know, and and then once we started you know, we were stuck at home. It was just, it was an outlet. And so I just started doing um, reggae tunes and I've always wanted to do some reggae stuff, but because I didn't have any members and people to jam with, I, I just reached out to, to, you know, regular guys all over the world that were making beats and stuff. And I'd connect with a guy in Germany, Mexico, Greece, and be like, dude, I'm, I'm stuck at home like we all are. And I'm doing some <laughs> reggae stuff. I, you know, I'd love if you'd send me some beats and guys just started sending me beats. And so I recorded a bunch of tunes and and it was supposed to come out already, but because you know we need to get a POD record out, it's, it right. kind of got pushed to the side a little bit. But we're done with the POD record, mixed, mastered. Um, it'll be out yes um, some sometime this year, if not the beginning of next year. Um, and then I'll I'll be able to sneak in some some reggae stuff in between then. But um, we're just doing a bunch of fly out dates. Uh, that's why we're practicing now. We fly out this weekend. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll be on tour at the end of the year, and then all mostly probably all international stuff next year, just in support of the of the release. And we're staying busy, man. Yeah, you know, that's awesome. Still fun. And, <laughs> and angels and serpents. Uh, when angels and serpent dance, that that's so funny that that record just disappeared. Right. Did you know that mm -mm. the record just yeah. disappeared off of the face of the earth, and just oh, recently man. came back? How's it doing? It's doing great, man. That's a whole other podcast story, but that's. Yeah. You know, because of streaming and all that stuff, you know, I yeah. think that was one of the only records that we just owned right out, you know, straight up. Yeah. And but because of, you know, no one buys records now. So because of streaming and all that stuff, you know, it was it was up to us to put it out and to uh, do it all ourselves. You know what I mean? So yeah. um, we finally got around to, to doing that. And then I think we make we mix mastered it, remix mastered and put it out almost 14 years later. So it's out now. And. You know, yeah. you just got to figure out other ways to do it. You know, people love vinyl these days, you know, and, and they'll right. still buy vinyl. And, 
it's it's just a whole different yeah. system now in the music industry. But we're just trying to put out content, and those who love it, they love it, you know. Yeah, if you make them a cool color, make the vinyl a cool color, yeah. and sign <laughs> it, everyone's, everyone's buying them. <laughs> we don't care about the music; we just want the collectibles. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's funny. That's funny. Um, and then uh, there was one more thing. Did you have something? There was another question. Oh my goodness! The Michael W. Smith collaboration. No. <laughs> oh no. No, no! no! This is what it is. <laughs> two two que two simple questions. We're, we're going to ask, start to ask all of our guests uh, who are in the music industry, and we asked Brian. Brian's was funny. If if you could play, record, do whatever with anyone out there, anyone mm -hmm. out there, it's good that you haven't had a chance to. Who would it be? Oh man, you said alive or dead or yeah, yeah. Brian asked the same thing. <laughs> Whatever you well, want. Well, because alive or dead. Dude, that's that's way too hard, man. I mean, obviously <laughs> if I if I think alive now, I would say someone from like a a Bono, you know, oh. to a to a sting, you know, that that world, because that's yeah. you know, for for that's that's a big rock world, or even you know, like uh Brian Johnson from ACDC. I mean, just yeah. When I was a kid, I you know that was stuff we grew up. But as far as hardcore and punk, you know all the legends. Pod's yeah. pretty much done it all with them, from HR right. to Mike Mir from Suicidal, you know Lou from Sick of It All. Just we've right. we've been we've been lucky to to have done that. So yeah. But then you think dead. I think of like a you know from a Bob Marley or Peter Tosh or a Jimi Hendrix or something like that. You know. Yeah. Brian and I did a, a game one time. It was uh. uh fantasy band dead or alive and, and and you picked your band members he and I, mine was uh les claypool on bass there you go and uh what's his name for the drummer from rush neil pert i was gonna neil say pert, pert. <laughs> yep yep and then my guitarist would have been uh oh gosh tom uh tom morello oh and, nice and my singer would have been mike Patton from uh from oh. That guy's got a range yeah, all over the place. That's a good one. That's yeah. a good one. So, um, but he I said, like that. He, he responded was, they probably wouldn't all do well together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's always the problem. <laughs> okay. That's the problem with these bands. <laughs> yeah. And then last question. Uh, are you a Netflix guy? Yes. Okay. What's your Netflix catch right now? Like, what do you, anything, anything cool? Um, What's on Netflix? What's on Netflix? No, dude, I'm searching. Like, I, I think I, I went through all my shows. Wait a... Oh what man, what was Brian's? What was Brian's? It was uh, the killer. Uh, who's the guy that put everyone in the freezer? Yeah. Uh, oh, the Dahmer. <laughs> Dahmer. The, the Dahmer. Yeah. Oh, that was creepy. That was creepy. That was creepy, man. Oh, yeah. cool. I think. I think I, I what did I recently? I I don't know. I think I watched like there's different stuff on other channels. My cats yeah. are trying to get. <laughs> I don't know. I think I spend more time searching for something to watch than yeah, I. Yeah, it's it's getting it's getting lame. It's just all the same thing over and over again. It's all programming well, because of COVID. I, I I caught up on all the stuff that you know that you'd never watched before because you needed to do something. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man, we we touched on a lot of stuff. I, I think our, our biggest leave question is, again, most of our listeners, we always share this. Uh, they come here either because they're in love with Jesus and just mm -hmm. don't want the, the normal churchy stuff uh, or they're trying to figure it out. And, yeah. uh, and we've, we've hit a chord with some people. Thank God. I, this mm -hmm. was, this was this guy's idea. That's awesome. You know, he man. asked me in the coffee shop, why don't you do a podcast? And I'm like, you're like the 50th person that's asked me. And I better start <laughs> listening. And, and we did this and, and yeah, 12 months later, 23 countries. Uh, and th but that's, that's the so thing cool. is people are like, it's just, it's like going and hearing a sermon about God, but not stuffy and not having to sit in church. So yeah. if you were talking to someone right now that, that is saying, you know, ah, I just don't know. I, you know, mm. I, I don't know about this, this guy, this Jesus, or, you know, and I think we touched on it. A lot of it is not Jesus. It's the church, but, yeah. Yeah. Um, but they say, how do I figure it out? What would, what do you say? Um, well, first of all, thank you guys for doing this. I think that's, this is, this is the start. I think people just want to see, uh, you know, guys and gals being authentic. You know, they don't, 
they don't want them to hold back the, the, the truths of their, their past or even what they go through now. They want them to be vulnerable. And these are the conversations that we can have about anything. You know what? Yeah. This is the beauty of it. We can sit and talk about whatever. I, yeah. I, 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 I would rather, instead of condemning someone, I would rather sit with them. And especially now, we're, we're divided by so much. I would, I would sit down with anybody and have a just a whatever, have a have a beer, have coffee if that's your thing. I don't care. And actually ask real questions and talk. Yeah. People want to see that authenticity. Um, but I would say to anybody listening that I'm sorry if you've been hurt by the institution of Christianity, if you've been hurt by people that say they know Jesus. The institution of church that's rubbed you the wrong way. I'm sorry about that because it, I've seen that it happens more than you think. And that's why most people are turned off to the love of God. Yeah. But that's not an excuse because yeah. that's why God gave us his word. That's why he gave us a, a mouth and a voice to talk to him. And it's as simple as that. I don't care if you're upset with God, I don't care if you have problems. I think you should tell them all about it. <laughs> That's good. I think you should say it out loud to God. And I've said this before. My God is huge. He can handle it. He is not offended by anything you've done. He's not shocked by this crazy world. He's not shocked by anything that you might have done in your past. He loves you. Yeah. And you'll never know that until you go to him like a little girl goes to her daddy or a little boy goes to his daddy. That's how intimate God is. And he wants to protect you and shelter and he wants to show you who you are. He wants to show you how much you're loved and how worthy you are. And he also wants to protect you from this world mm. because this world hates you and this world is lying to you and God wants to reveal his most intimate truths with you. And if you have any problems or concerns or worries or anything at all, yeah. You don't need a church to go to right now. I mean, I hope you find a great church that you can go to, but that's why God gave us his word. And yeah. the answers are in there. And 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 again, but it starts with you just talking to God and Love just it, yeah. be honest, honest with them. Love and it. and but on the on this on the flip side, if you're gonna ask hard questions, be ready for answers that that might not uh, be the most comfortable in the moment, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. But, he, but eventually, if, but if you trust God and you know that he's good, you're like, it doesn't matter how I receive whatever God shows me, I know that in the long run, it, this is what's gonna make me grow. This is what's gonna make me, draw me closer to him. Right. This is what's gonna put me on the path to the most beautiful um, relationship with the God of the universe. So, um, but, and I believe you can do that. I, I believe everybody has that access. Um, and that, that is through, through Jesus. Let him show you, um, who his father is. That's awesome. Thank Love you. It. That's yeah. good. Love it. Will we, will we put you on the spot if we ask you to pray us out. No way, man. Beautiful. Let's pray. All right. Father God, you're so good. We love you so much, Lord. Thank you for your goodness towards us. Thank you for your grace and Lord, thank you for your mercy, but also Lord, we thank you for your truth. We thank you for your truth, God, that um, that leads us. <laughs> we can't have truth, God, with, uh, uh, or we can't have mercy without your truth, Lord. You show us how much uh, we need you, and we do, God. We need you so much, Lord. I say you would bless every single person that's listening to this right now, God. I ask, Lord, that you would cleanse their hearts and their minds, Lord. Lord, you would you would show them how to be still so that they can know who you are, God. And I just pray Lord, pray, Lord, that you would blow their minds away, God. Only you can do this, Lord. Some people are so stubborn and hard-headed, Lord, that it really does take a miracle, God, for them to even, to even give you a shot, God. And I just pray, God, that you would split the heavens mm -hmm. and you would come down from your throne, God, and you would do that miracle in this person's life and be undeniable, God, that they would give you just a moment, God, to even take them deeper into a relationship with you, Lord. So bless everybody who's listening to this, God, in whatever shape, form, or fashion they need it, Lord. They just need a touch. They need a healing touch, Lord. They need just for you to tell them that you love them this day and that you're proud of them, God, and that you, you do not condemn them, Lord, but you have a plan and a future for them, Lord. Would you do that? And thank you for these gentlemen for stepping out, God, to just uh, open up these conversations, Lord. 
Lord, we can't be uh, real with anybody, Lord, if we're not real with ourselves and we're not real with you first, God. So thank you for our vulnerability, Lord. And God, if I've said anything that offends anybody, whatever, Lord, well, that's going to happen because I'm just I'm just human, Lord. But Lord, I love you. We love you, God. Yes. We're thankful that you saved us and that you have a plan and a purpose for our lives and everyone else who would trust in you, God. So show them how to do it, Lord. Now we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, man. Thank you Tell again us. for coming on. We appreciate your time and sorry for Heck taking yeah. you away from all that and your cat. <laughs> no, no way. I just got to, she probably just wants me to feed her. That's all. <laughs> awesome. Go have a good practice. Tell the guys we said hello and we love them. For too. sure. For sure. Love you, fellas. See ya. Love you too. See ya. Love you, man.